you dog. There's my baby. There's my baby. Oh, stretches. Oh, stretches. Oh, what a good girl. Shall we help people find good bets? Should we help people find good bets? What do you think? So hi everybody, I wanted to do a video today for you guys about a topic that I feel like I am pretty knowledgeable about. It is how to find a good veterinarian. Um, I think a lot of people when they get a puppy for the first time, it's just so overwhelming trying to find a good doctor. It's hard enough finding a good doctor for ourselves, but for our dogs it's a completely new world. A lot of people. Um, don't have any experience in the veterinary industry. So I'm hoping that this will help you guys out a little bit. Um, this is coming from someone with six years of experience in vet clinics and I've worked in every single type of vet clinic. I've worked from, you know, the really high quality vets that are just awesome. And then I've worked for some not so good ones. So. I'm going to give you some information and hopefully this will help you find the perfect veterinarian for you and your dog. Okay, so my first tip would be it's important to get referrals. Ask as many people as you possibly can that are in your area, friends and family that have dogs or cats, which veterinarian they would recommend. It's very important to get referrals because these people have real life experience with this one veterinarian and it's going to help you eliminate a lot of the vets in your area and just be very cautious when you're listening to the referrals as well. Ask your friends and family why they would recommend that veterinarian. If it is because they have a great mannerism with animals or they just seem to care a lot about the owner and their dog, that is great. That is like a green light. Go to that vet and see what they're doing. If it is because of cost, if you hear someone say, well, I would recommend this veterinarian because they're just so cheap, that's a red flag. I would not listen to any referrals solely based on price. Vets are very much like dog food. You pay for what you get. So if they are so much more cheap than other vets in your area, it's because there's certain things that are being cut. And so you just have to be careful. Listen to the referral, figure out why it is they're recommending that veterinarian. All right, so my second tip for you guys would be use the internet. And what I mean by this is you can figure out the qualifications of the vets that you're looking at via the internet. So I'm going to give you an example. I live in Ontario. So in Ontario, veterinarians are registered with the College of Veterinarians of Ontario, CVO. So if you type that in, CVO, into Google, it comes up on a website and you can actually look up all of the qualifications of your vet. You can look at when they graduated vet school. You can look at what vet school they graduated, if they graduated in the States, in Canada, in the UK, wherever it may be. And it just helps you understand a little bit more about your veterinarian. So I believe that the majority of places have that available. Figure out what the website is and what the organization is that veterinarians register with in your location. They should have a place on their website where you can look up the qualifications of the veterinarian that you're thinking about. All right, so now that you've gotten referrals, narrowed it down to certain vets, looked at their qualifications, now you're going to want to have a tour of the vet clinic. This is so important because it gives you so many clues about the way that the vet practices. Um, I can't stress how important it is. Almost every single vet clinic will give you a tour if you ask. So there are certain things that you really do want to be watching for when you do your tour. You really have to be kind of focused, know what you're looking for, and it's going to give you a lot of clues. So number one, when you are doing the tour, 
you want to look for cleanliness. Look for cleanliness in every single part of the vet clinic. You want to look at the appointment rooms, make sure that they're nice and clean. You want to look at the surgery room, make sure that they've got a stainless steel table, that they look basically impeccable. Everything is clean, everything is sanitized. It tells you a lot about just the standards that that vet clinic has. So the second thing that you want to be looking for is organization in the vet clinic. So you just want to look and see, is the vet clinic organized into certain specific areas? If it is, then that's great. What I mean by this is you want to look and see if there is a separate surgical suite, if there is a separate laboratory area where they do their blood diagnostic work, if there is a separate area for appointments, if there's a separate area for, you know, housing dogs and cats, you want to make sure that cats and dogs are housed separately, not together. And it's just, it's important to see how well organized they are, how they're running, if everything is running smoothly. So the third thing that you want to be looking for during this tour is recovery suites for animals that go through surgery. After your animal goes through surgery, they are recovering from anesthetic. So this basically means that they have to be able to breathe on their own after they're taken off of all of the medications that are involved with surgery. Um, I can't stress enough how many times I've seen an animal die because there wasn't a recovery suite in the surgery room. Um, or in an area where the vets and the people are constantly passing by. If there is no place for animals that are coming out of surgery to recover for, you know, the first hour after surgery, I would be very hesitant because this means that they really aren't paying close attention to those animals. It's important to make sure that someone is able to see your animal after they go through surgery at that vet clinic um, just to make sure everything goes well. So the next thing during your tour that you want to do is look at the animals that are currently in the kennels at that vet clinic. That's a really good way to tell how your dog or your cat is going to be treated when they're in that vet clinic. So you want to look and see, you know, do all of the animals that you see during your tour have water, have food, or you know if they're going into surgery they may not have food just because you can't feed animals before surgery. Um, but just make sure that they've got everything. They've got a nice blanket to be laying down on. If they're sitting on a hard concrete floor with pee in the kennel and no water, that's a pretty bad sign because it shows that they're not paying attention to their animals. So look at how the animals are being treated during your tour. Make sure that you, you know, glance into a couple of the kennels and just, just see how it's all set up. Cause that's a really good indication how your animal is going to be treated later on in that vet clinic. The last thing to be looking for during your tour is appointment times. So you wanna see how long vets are taking with their clients. Now, if you walk in to do the tour of this vet clinic and you see, you know, people walking in and out of the appointment rooms in 10 minute increments, that, that's not good. Not good at all. If you see people going in and the vets taking their time with those people, then that's awesome. You don't want a vet that's only gonna take 10 to 15 minutes with your animal. They're not going to properly evaluate your animal's health. Um, you want a vet that takes their time with you. You want a vet that is willing to take the time to answer your questions and spend the time getting to know your animal. Spend the time making your animal comfortable in that clinic. A vet that's not willing to sit down on the floor and spend the time getting your animal comfortable with them is not a good vet. So just watch for the, the appointment times, watch, watch how often people are walking in and out of the appointment rooms, and that's going to help you understand a lot more about how long 
the vets are going to take with you. So the next step, step number four, you've gone to the clinic, you've taken a tour, everything looks great. Now you want to bring your pet in to meet the vets and the technicians that are working at that clinic. You want to see if the veterinarian meshes well with your pet. If everything looks great, but you bring your pet in and it's a nightmare, that's not going to work, right? So you just want to see how your pet meshes with the staff. If the staff is loving towards your pet, if they take the time to make your pet comfortable. The final um, tip that I have for you guys has to do with after you're visiting your veterinarian um, for a couple of times, you know, over the course of six months to a year you really want to watch for a couple of things. So the first thing that I would say that you want to watch for after you've been at that veterinarian for a while is high turnover rates. If it's a new person at the front counter every single time you walk in, if there's new veterinarians that you're constantly meeting and new technicians that you're constantly meeting, that's a bit of a red flag can mean that some of the technicians aren't um, satisfied with the level of detail in that veterinary clinic, or it can mean that the staff is highly overworked, meaning that basically they're trying to put through way too many animals in one workday. And that's not what you want in a vet clinic. You want a vet clinic that really does not focus on money, money, money. You want a vet clinic that focuses on the animals that they're taking care of and takes the time to do what they need to with the animal that you have. So um, that's the first thing that I would watch for. And the second thing is never stay with a veterinarian that makes you feel degraded. If you have questions for your vet and they make you feel degraded at all, that's not a good vet. You should never stay with someone that won't listen to you or will force you into doing treatments and tests. It's okay for a veterinarian to explain themselves, but it's very important that you do not subject yourself to a bad environment. The good vets are going to approach you in a way that will make you feel equal, will make you feel well heard. Um, just make sure that you're being treated well and that you're being valued as a customer and as a pet owner that your opinions are being valued. It's okay for your vet to um, not agree with your opinion or to present you know, some treatment plans that aren't in the cost range that you have, but if they don't listen to you when you tell them that you can't maybe do those treatments or if they aren't listening to your opinion, that's not a very good indication that they are kind of approaching you at the same level. So just watch for those things while you're kind of learning a bit more about your vet while you're visiting your vet, you know, for the first year. So that's all that I have for you guys today. I know it was a lot of information. It's important information though. I think that when you find the perfect doctor for your animal, oh, it is such a relief off of your shoulders is so amazing. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you want to, you can always give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know that you want more videos like this. Um, comment down below. Let me know kind of the pros and cons that you've seen with veterinarians as well. And I hope you guys have a really great day. I'll see you guys later. Bye.